So, here's a video about touch-up tuning on a grand piano. Now, this is a piano that's used for concerts once a month uh, in Gavot uh, 2 meter 35 from 1922. And it just needs a quick touch-up. It's probably up to A440 still. Now I can check my 440. It's probably high. So let's listen to the A220 and we're listening at the first overtone. That's the string divided in half. I can hear that. So we're up to, um, it's gone up because there's been some humidity and uh, everything's expanded, so we're up above 440. Now I Maybe I'll leave it at 442 because uh, there's some string players playing for the next concert and they kind of like it a little higher. But just to make sure that a lot of times the bass strings end up with the change of unity at all, they end up being, sometimes they stay at A442 and the other strings go up because the soundboard expands in the center more than at the edges where the bass bridge is. So it could be that the bass strings are still down to the A440 level. So let's listen to... Now a lot of times this area, the break into the tenor, these strings, curiously enough, they tend to go sharp a lot of times. So you might find that this area, these notes, these first two or three notes are, are a bit sharp. Of usual. Now let's uh, listen down in the. See, it sounds like. sure that if the center section is really really high it's expanded quite a bit and the bass strings are still at the proper level then uh, you might as well bring this back down to the A440 so you don't have to stress the bass strings because um, you don't want to be breaking bass strings and pulling them up to 442 or higher so double check before you start tuning that is going to correspond well with the bass, where the bass strings are. If the bass strings are, well, this is a touch-up tuning. We're not talking about pitch raising and uh, tuning a piano for the first time. So, I think, let's double check. two beat rates against each other, if they're not tuned, when they're tuned together, the beat rates will stay constant. If they're slightly out of tune, you'll get a and then there'll be a beat rate of a beat rate, which you don't want. You want that beat rate to be the same. So you can hear 
songs, so it's a little bit of a difference. So go back, listen. This upper one is a little bit sharp. And you notice I'm using this long tuning tip. Also, I've reduced the diameter on the very end of it so that if you have a case where you have to go in between a tuning pins that are too close together, it'll go through. This you can easily do on a lathe and reduce the, that. Now, I like this long one because in the Galbo you have this high cut. And with a tuning hammer with a short, I'm going to be bumping my hand against and the tuning lever against the plate. So this allows me also quite a bit of leverage when I'm bumping that pin back around again. And you notice I keep my hands, and I'm just doing a touch up, I'm doing very, very microscopic changes. I'm not going to turn the pin and then turn it back and keep turning it in the wood. I'm just going to bump bump up the tension or down with the tension on the various lengths of the string. as an impact wrench by just giving a bit of a jump and the weight that's why it's a good idea to have a very heavy hammer because you can use that weight as the way of moving the pin. And I'm going to double check right away with the, the F to the A is pretty close. It's a touch-up tuning so it's still pretty close to seven per second. slightly faster. flat is a little bit too low. And why also when I play the third, it's beating really fast. So I've got to bring my B flat up a little bit. That's all it took. It was just pulling that pin. I didn't even turn it in the, the wood, or very slightly. So, I've already tuned the C, so I can check that again. That's a bit too flat, so maybe my E flat is a little bit flat. you're just going to be, you're going to have problems if you leave the fallboard in, your, your arm is going to be pushing on the fallboard. So take the fallboard out, rest, get in the habit of resting your arm on the part of the piano. That way you can use the action of your, of your wrist. very slightly.
fourths a little bit wide. We went a little bit too far and moved the pin in the wood. So I've got to bring it back down by just giving it slight jerks. That's the temperament area. Now let's double check with using the. That's a bit too fast. of the speed and you can also do listen to those fourths to get that fourth okay now I can move either way up or down in a touch-up tuning usually it's just you're working quite fast and so it doesn't matter whether you go down into the bass or up into the treble tension. So I already know that I'm going to be bumping it down in most of the cases. First of all, my fifth. Fourth. Third. First thing I checked is the fifth and listen, listen for some, some a little bit of a beat rate. check to see which side I'm on, whether I'm too low or too high, by doing this, this is the beat rate, and that beat rate, this is the fifth, well, it was too high, as most of them were in this area. So we're good. Now I can also double check with the major third. Just a slight bump. Moving down into the bass string area. You don't want to break any bass strings. <laughs> and sometimes I'll even take my uh, piece of cardboard, put it at the end of the bass strings against the, um, between the plate and the rim. So just in case a bass string breaks, it's going to hit this instead of making a big gouge in the, in the rim.
bring that note up a little bit to speed up the third, the, ma the minor third. You see, I'm not turning the pin in the pin block, I'm just increasing the tension and pulling that string through a little bit, and then bumping it back to make sure it's nice and settled. down in this area. I never used the major third, major third octave, because it's just too muddy down there. You don't hear what you need to hear. But you can use your minor third, major six. It's a little bit too fast. You can hear that listening to it up here. So you can use that uh, minor third, major six test all the way down to the very bottom. But when you get down into the very low notes here, First, you try to make the, uh, the octave sound pretty good, but uh, the octave is not the strongest of the overtones there, and you have to choose which overtone you want to match. So... up on those two octaves. So you listen to that fifth. Okay, now at this point you can bring back 
the unisons in the base, if you want, first of all. It's just a touch up because it's very close to A, to the proper A anyway. But let's say I want to start moving up into the treble there. So the F is the first note of after the temperament area. And here I'll be using my... is a little bit too flat. Maybe you've bent the pin a little bit and it's going to come back. So jiggle it around and that pin straightens up and becomes nice and solid. There you can hear me. It's too slow, so it's too flat. in those beat rates, whereas you can hear the difference in the beat rates of the...
to get tricked by a false beat coming out of one single string, if the string has a, a defect in it, it's going to give you a false beat rate. Now already I can also double check my, from this point on up, I can play with the left hand, the octave, and add on. If you really want to, you can even listen to how smooth it is. You get to the point where you've, you've memorized, almost memorized the sound of, I can hear already in my mind. So when I play that note, that upper note, I can hear it if it's flat or sharp already just because of the memory and of having heard I want to match it to that smooth I can hear it real in that fifth there that tells me already that this note is too flat major third beat rate is getting quite fast already. So you can also go down an octave third. Listen to that beat rate and match it to that. Double check your double octave. and set solid. to hear beat rates, so if I play this note, if I want to be 
tuning this up, listen to the double octave dump below it. And make sure that sounds nice and sweet sounding. You don't want it to sound too sour. If it's if it's too, if you tune it too sharp, you might be thinking, well, I'm just following the stretch of the strings, and they should be stretched up in the treble end, but don't stretch it too much. Just listen to it, make it sound nice to all the octaves.